Hey Wargamers, today we're going to talk about this guy, the Tau Broadside, talk about strengths, weaknesses, how you might want to use in your army, everything like that, including new updates from the new Tau Codex. Uh, before we do that though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, hit like, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, that way you don't miss any of my upcoming unit reviews, battle reports, or other 40k content. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, of course, we're going to be using this guy, the new Tau Codex, uh, starting with kind of some of the basics and moving into some of the options and stuff that you're going to want to use with this. Um, so overall, the broadside is a heavier version of the Crisis Suit. In fact, when the Tau were first introduced, Crisis Suits and broadsides used the same base model. Uh, the broadside was based off the Crisis Suit. Now they have separate models, but uh, the idea is that the broadside is the heavier version of the crisis suit. It's kind of your main gun line uh, mid-size suit that's going to really uh, anchor down your gun line and give you a fair amount of firepower. And that's at least that's the idea. Um, we'll talk about how that actually works out in, pro in practice. Broadsides are about 130 to 150 points each, and a unit contains one to three broadsides. One of those can be a Chaz Vray, uh, which is their sergeant type guy uh, that gives you a few extra perks. If you're only bringing one broadside, it might as well be a Chaz Vray. Um, but yeah, for that you get uh, movement five, weapon skill five, ballistic skill four, strength five, toughness five, six wounds, uh, two or three attacks if you're bringing a Chaz Vray, uh, leadership seven or eight, again with the Chaz Vray. So that's, you know, you might as well bring the Chaz Vray and then a two up save. So right off the bat, it should be obvious that this is a harder to kill unit, right? That two up save is really nice. Higher toughness uh, is valuable here as well. Um, but it's not super durable, right? There's no invulnerable save right off the bat. There's no um, excessive amount of wounds. Six wounds is not that hard to do. Um, even with bolters, you're gonna get through eventually. Um, but especially with something like fusion, Laz, Plaz, um, are gonna be able to take care of a six wound model relatively quickly. So they're durable, but not um, super durable. So keep that in mind. Broadsides have for the greater good and bonding knife ritual special rules. Uh, they also have the Tau Empire and Sept keywords as well as the Battlesuit XV88 broadside keywords as well. Um, now, Let's talk about some of the options that you have with these guys. Starting off with some of the uh, easier options and then moving into the more challenging ones. So the easier ones are going to be looking at uh, what drones you're gonna take. Um, you have the option of taking missile drones. Missile drones are just you know, gun drones, but instead of carbines, they have a missile pod basically. Um, but they're pretty expensive and they're still drones. So. In general, I tend to think that missile drones are not worth bringing with these guys, uh, largely because of their cost and also their lack of output. I'm not a huge fan of missile pods in the codex anyway, and when you put it on top of a, a drone, it just gets that much more poor, I guess, that much worse, right? Like, you don't have a good platform for it, and it's an unreliable weapon that's just kind of in this weird spot, and it's expensive. So stay away from missile drones. If you're going to bring a drone, bring something like a shield drone. Like I said, broadsides are durable, but they're not super durable, so something like a shield drone can help prolong their durability or prolong their longevity on the tabletop, and that's really something that you want to do with these guys if you bring them, because they're not cheap, they're not super expensive, but they're an investment that you want to have on the board if you're spending those points. So a shield drone um, or two is definitely worth it in my opinion. Um, so the more you know detailed options here are what you're going to take for weapons and supporting systems. You have the option of either taking a high yield missile pod or heavy rail rifle as your primary weapon, a smart missile system or plasma rifles for your secondary weapons, and then you have the option of taking one support system. So let's break that down. Uh, the main weapon that you're choosing starts off as a heavy rail rifle. That's a heavy two strength eight minus four AP D6 damage um, shot that uh, if you make a roll of a six to wound, it does an additional mortal wound, which is nice. That's gonna help you out with things that have a lot of durability, things like vehicles. Uh, it's also actually gonna make it a little bit more versatile in terms of taking out infantry or you know multi-model units because those mortal wounds will spill over. But ideally, the heavy rail rifle is meant to be taking out multi-wound, small model count units. So vehicles, super heavy infantry, um, monsters, things like that. 
Alternatively, you can go with the High Yield Missile Pod, sure. uh, which is range 36, heavy four, strength seven, minus one AP, and then D3 damage. You get two of those, so you can kind of think of it as being um, an heavy, a heavy eight weapon, although, you know, in terms of if you're splitting your shots, um, it's two heavy four weapons, of course. And um, really, you're gonna probably be putting all of your shots into one target anyway, so yeah, anyway. He has eight missile shots, is what I want to convey there. Um, and looking at, at these two different options, there's uh, actually a really, really uh, stark difference in which is the more points efficient for taking out on different targets. If you're talking about anything that's lower than toughness six, so most infantry, the high yield missile pot is the more points efficient damage dealer. If you're talking about taking out anything that's um, you know, toughness seven or toughness eight or higher, the heavy rail rifle is the more points efficient option. So uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you're gonna go with one of those two, right? If you're bringing this to take out infantry, then yeah, go with the high yield missile pod. If you're using this to bring some anti-armor to your army, go with the uh, heavy rail rifle. However, I think generally the heavy rail rifle is gonna be the little, a little bit more of a niche um, choice for this guy. You have lots of different options for taking out infantry. So, you know, bringing high yield missile pods on an expensive platform that can be taken out by just a couple LAS cannons, probably not uh, the best use of, of your army. So putting the heavy rail rifle option in here seems like a good way to bring some anti-armor to your army and uh, leave the infantry killing to your fire warriors and other stuff. For your secondary weapon, like I said, you have the choice between a smart missile system, which is a heavy four, uh, strength five, no AP, one damage uh, weapon that ignores line of sight and cover, um, or a set of plasma rifles. Um, and in general, I think the smart missile system is going to be the better choice here because A, it has farther range. Um, you're getting um, a fair number of shots out of it. And if you pair it with an advanced targeting system, now those are minus one against uh, all targets and essentially uh, minus two against units in cover because it ignores cover. So the smart missile system is a really good option in um, a lot of different situations. The plasma rifle is much more specialized, it's shorter range, and yes, if you take it in as bore can, you are going to get extra range on that um, as well, and that's gonna help, but I still think that the Smart Missile System is going to be the more versatile option and probably something that you want to bring as a default. Um, then it brings a question of support systems. There's um, a few that are gonna stand out as being potentially good. Uh, something like a target lock is gonna be nice because it allows them to move and shoot more effectively. One of the big weaknesses of Broadside, Broadside has historically been that they are not mobile. They're still not very mobile, they're only moving five inches, but hey, that's better than some units in the game. Um, and with the target lock, they can move freely and, and not worry about it. But again, really, this is gonna be a gun line unit. You're not gonna worry too much about moving them. And um, the target lock seems like it is generally gonna lose out to some other options like the advanced targeting system, which I mentioned. Uh, if you're bringing high yield missile pods and swarm missile systems, the advanced targeting system is going to uh, boost their efficacy just a little bit and make make a nice difference for you. Um, if you're bringing a heavy rail rifle, the advanced targeting system is kind of you know not necessary for them. So I would go instead with a shield generator. And again, you could go with the shield generator on the high yield missile pod option as well. But in general, the shield generator is going to give you a increase in durability that you're not going to have otherwise. And again increasing the durability of these guys is going to be valuable. So shield generator or advanced targeting system, either one of those I think is probably going to be your go-to option on a broadside. You could also look at something like an early warning override, but you know, uh, again, I think probably having the benefit of these other support systems, especially when people aren't going to be able to deep strike on you at, during turn one, um, having the benefit of these other supporting systems throughout the entire game, you know, every game, regardless of if people are deep striking, is gonna be a better bet than hoping that someone's gonna deep strike and you're gonna be able to use this supporting system. So 
You also have the option of bringing a Seeker Missile on these guys. Um, I'm a big fan of Seeker Missiles. I think they're a good points investment, but here I would, you know, I'm pretty lukewarm on it. I think the place where you want to bring Seeker Missiles are on Hammerheads with Long Strike. Um, those are going to be the places where you really get the most bang for your buck out of a Seeker Missile. On a broad side, eh, you know, you could try it. Um, it's probably not going to make a big difference either way, especially since it's only one Seeker Missile. So, yeah, you know, do what you want. Have fun. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Sept options. Uh, most Septs are actually gonna work pretty darn well with broadsides. Uh, the only two that are not gonna really jive with the way you're using broadsides are Vior Law, because again, broadsides aren't gonna be moving. They don't have um, rapid fire weapons with the exception of the plasma rifle, and um, Farsight Enclaves because you don't want these guys up close to people. Um, so they're not gonna be moving into close range, and and uh, you're not really gonna get the benefit out of Farsight Enclaves like you would with pretty much any other Sept. So those two Septs stay away from, but things like uh, Tau Sept are gonna be really good um, because again, as a gun line unit, this guy is going to benefit from being in a gun line and you know, using Overwatch is going to be that much more effective on this guy. He works really well in Overwatch and can be a really nice deterrent to assault armies. Uh, things like Dalith, again, increasing the durability of this unit is uh, valuable. So having cover automatically, putting him wherever you want, that's a good option there as well. Um, Borkan, increasing their range. Yep, that works. And uh, what, I, oh, Sakia, that's the last one. Sakia, if you're bringing a heavy rail rifle uh, version, being able to reroll is valuable there as well. So. Um, Sekia, you know, if you're bringing a, a high yield missile pod, then uh, probably not the best choice, but heavy rail rifle, yeah, that can work out a lot better. Broadsides can benefit from a few different stratagems. Unfortunately, they're low enough that they can't benefit from the stimulant injector um, in any way. Not that they would because they're not tiered, but yeah, there's just no play there for, for that. Um, but you can use things like command and control node to boost their output uh, or focus fire from the tau sept those are going to be two really valuable options for broadsides uh, especially focus fire focus fire is going to play really nicely with any of the loadouts that you take uh, because again broadsides are meant to be these these uh you know heavy hitters and if you can you know just tweak just tweak the amount that they can actually perform that duty a little bit by using the focus fire stratagem from Tau, uh, you are going to, uh, you're gonna like it. You're gonna like the way you look, I guarantee it. Um, but otherwise, uh, using that with the heavy rail rifle is extra beneficial because it increases the likelihood that you're going to be able to get one of those procs on a mortal wound. So increasing your ability to generate mortal wounds is a, a clear benefit for the heavy rail rifle version. So all that said, how would I run a broadside in my army? Well, uh, there's kind of two different parts to that. One is assuming I'm bringing one, how am I gonna run it? And then the second part is the, the nastier question of, do I wanna bring a broadside in the first place? So let's start with that first one. Uh, if I'm gonna bring a broadside, how am I gonna run it? Well, I'm probably gonna bring it as Tau or Borkan. Again, I think those are the two stronger steps for broadsides. I'm gonna bring heavy rail rifles, um, and I'm also gonna bring smart missile systems with an advanced targeting system, or more likely uh, a shield generator. I'm also going to pair them with shield drones because I want them to stay on the table as long as possible for the investment that I'm putting into them. That's how I would run broadsides. Again, I'm going to be leaving a lot of the infantry killing to things like fire warriors or other stuff. I'm not that interested in the high yield missile pod. I'm more interested in the anti-armor that the heavy rail rifle brings. Okay, so that answers the first question. The second question, am I going to bring a broadside in the first place? And the answer is no. Um, the reason for that is if we look at comparing broadsides to the two other units that you know would otherwise fill, fill that role, uh, being riptides or hammerheads, they just lose out. Um, so in terms of points efficiency offensively, the, um, the broadside loses out to riptides hands over, hand over fist. Um, if we're talking about the heavy burst cannon variant, it's gonna be more effective uh, against 
most targets. And if we're talking about the ion accelerator version, it's going to be more effective against vehicles. So there's actually only a very slim area where the heavy rail rifle version of a broadside um, or any broadside is going to be more effective than either of the versions of a Riptide. And that is against the standard uh, Toughness 7 3-up save vehicle. Against that, the heavy rail rifle is going to be a little bit more points efficient. But if I'm building a list, I'm not going to assume that an army is going to be comprised completely of you know, strength or toughness seven, three up say vehicles. I'm assuming that there's gonna be a diversity of profiles in the enemy army. And so I'm gonna to want to take um, units that are good in a variety of situations. So for that reason alone, I think the Riptides are going to be the better option. But additionally, Riptides are more durable, they're more mobile, uh, they have more wounds, higher toughness, uh, they have an invulnerable safe built in. Um, they are faster, they have more versatility, you know, the list goes on. Riptides have a lot to bring to the table, whereas broadsides are pretty one note. So with that in mind too, the Riptides are a better choice tactically because they can do a lot more. They're not just stand and shoot, they're going to jump around, they're going to grab objectives, pressure flanks, and um, do so in a much more versatile way. They benefit from more stratagems as well. So I think that Unfortunately, broadsides got a lot of improvements in the codex, but they weren't enough to compete with the um, better changes that Riptides received. So if you're interested in making a points efficient army, probably you're gonna wanna consider Riptides instead. If you're just into the idea of broadsides, they're not bad, but they're just not as good as Riptides. So thanks for watching, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and of course, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, this video was made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you also enjoyed this video, consider joining our community over there. Special thanks to Max Harrison, No Excuses Panda, Paul Luters, Tao Oswell, Nick Steele, Jared Egler, Brian Mann, Jake Johnson, Eric Jackson, Christopher Sorrell, Yuhei Penguin, Andy M. Young, Peter Benjamin Parker, and Giovanni DiMaggio.